oftentimes matchups between two very different factions can produce some interesting results, and Vampire Coast versus Corn is certainly one of those. Uh, Corn here to harvest some blood and skulls from the soggy bodies of the Vampire Coast, led by Silostra Deerfin here. Got some Night Terrors and lots of Depth Guard. Looks like uh, three Dual Axe Depth Guard and one Polearm Depth Guard in the back. Lamprey's Revenge. We've also got some Deckhands mixed in here as well. A couple Animated Hulks for some mass. Yeah, the Ridge of Renowned Morgul's uh, interesting choice for sure. They've got, I think, what, extra weapon strength? Uh, yeah, pretty decent. Cause Terror. Uh, low armor and low melee defense could be a little bit of a problem here, but hopefully that Hunger can sustain them. Also got a couple Handgun Mobs. Slowly inching forward, their slow speed means they are going to be tough to recover if they uh, kind of get thrown here. But let's see, they're moving in to engage the Skull Cannon. Got some Furies of Corn, Minotaurs of Corn, more Minotaurs in the back there with lots of Marauders and Valkia. On the sides, looks like the Hounds of the Blood Hunt and some more Furies. A couple more Furies. Furies, very squishy, but can do a lot of damage very quickly, especially those squishy meatbag range units of the Vampire Coast. One thing in this matchup, certainly, that you have to consider is mass of pistol mobs, which is not something that was brought particularly in this battle, but still, um, like, for example, Bloodletters, who would be great at carving through Depth Guard, and just generally their decent speed and, and DPS makes them great for cleaving through hordes of zombies as well, of course. Uh, <laughs> They're a little bit risky here due to the fact that you can bring mass pistol mobs and just lay down immense amounts of sort of non-armor piercing, high DPS range fire, right? So right now both players just patiently assessing each other's positions. Let's go ahead and fast forward momentarily as the Hell Cannon, sorry, Skull Cannon is going to take a few shots here. Won't really do too much damage, but it is going to, uh, you know, pick some HP off of these units initially. I don't think it actually does magical damage, does it? Oh, it actually does. So it potentially could try and snipe Silostra here. It'd be interesting, but uh, as soon as units get pulled far enough out of position, this is definitely one of the weaknesses of Vampire Coast. They're very slow units, make them tough to respond. So like this handgun mob is likely done for, although I don't know, Depth Guards are quick enough. They might be able to get out there and get into space, but both players kind of just relaxing at this point. I don't know, play, taking very passive stances, which I don't Totally understand, but still, uh, Vampire Coast getting some of their units kind of picked apart here. Depth Guard kind of ran back and then ran back forward. Uh, the Furies, we did manage to finish off those handgun mobs, and the Animated Hulk's also taking massive damage there. So, pretty good trade for Corn so far. Skull Cannon getting some value, charging in, going to be pulling back. And it's very patient play. I'm not sure exactly why the Vampire Coast player feels they need to just sit here and take this, but uh, definitely should be moving forward and trying to seize that initiative. But as it is, we'll take some piecemeal attacks. Looks like the Depth Guard's moving in there and getting on those Furies, kind of counterattacking them on the ground, although still the handguns are just being horribly punished. So a loss of missile units there will be significant. You can see now the Minotaurs and uh, Marauders coming forward now that some of those threats have been dealt with. So very patient play sometimes to remove some of those threats. But now, finally, the punish is real and enough Depth Guards, Animated Hulks come through to actually Finish off one unit of Furies before they can finish those handguns. Another Fury moves in to try and do the same, but again, lots of reinforcements now actually present to support. See, they will force them into crumbling momentarily. There's no magical healing from vampires, of course, given they've just got Silostra here. Let's see. The uh, defensiveness of the Lamprey's Revenge, their own self-healing, will definitely help out. Same thing, like these Depth Guard, of course, will be able to cut through a lot of marauders no problem and their hunger will help them regenerate so in corn despite these early wins is still certainly looking at a tough situation they brought a lot of armor piercing anti-large right not a lot of anti-infantry which means the death guard are actually going to be in their element especially the halberds here if they're able to support kind of these monstrous infantry from getting butchered by the minotaurs the rest should be able to get the work done i mean death guards i don't know the dual hand weapons i think in the right situations would certainly lose to the Minotaurs, especially if they all grouped up and kind of rolled as one big ball, especially if you get, like, the Skull Cannon in there, kind of supporting as a single entity with that push as well. But right now, it is being pushed away slightly by those handguns. Valkia lands in the middle, and the rush is now connecting. You can see the uh, Corn player taking a nice wide stance, getting a decent surround, although engaging in the front here. Yeah, this Marauder is definitely going to be punished quite hard by the Depth Guard. Minotaur is a little bit late on the follow-up there. Let's see, Valkia popping her Demon Shield. Looks like it's off already. 
And, uh, yeah, she's in involved with the Lambry's Revenge there, but... Definitely the lack of anti-infantry for Korn could be a problem. We do see the depth, or sorry, the depth guard getting charged here. Not, not quite getting the charge on those bloodhounds, flesh hounds even. You know what I mean. <laughs> the blood bulls also. Minotaurs of Korn moving in for a nice engagement. Finally, we get some monstrous infantry on monstrous infantry action. And no surprises, animated hulks just get crumped there. Lamprey's Revenge also taking severe damage. And yeah, those Death Guard with the enough armor-piercing elites on top of them, they're just going to fold like wet pieces of paper. That said, there are enough of them and some cheap pull arms as well. Looks like Silostra is going to be summoning up the damned Knights Errant to help contribute some extra bodies here. Also... Of course, they are pure armor-piercing damage, and Frostbite makes them great for taking down a multitude of targets. Although they even get the greatest charge here, they can kind of help against these Minotaurs, keep them locked in place, at least momentarily, while the Halberds connect from the backside. Uh, Silustra also popping that uh, Song of Enthrallment there, melee attack, debuff, and speed is going to, again, help lock down some of these uh, corn units. And, ooh, is that a Kraken's pull? Stationary Vortex, a lot of people forget exists. Can be quite good. It's going to pull in some Marauders there. Not the most value in the world, but it's something. Horn uh, Cannon sitting in here also just getting wrecked by the pole arms. And as mentioned, the monstrous infantry of the Vampire Coast just got absolutely buttered like bread. Like, I don't even see those Regiment Round Morngulls even in existence anymore. So, yeah, the painful experience for them. But perhaps the Death Guard can actually carry here. Even the dual hand weapons, despite the fact they're not anti-large. That high weapon strength, 71 uh, 50 non-AP, 20 AP total is still amazing, to be honest. Uh, certainly enough to get through the 70 armor of the Minotaurs, no problem. Especially with some more summons now moving in, some more crabs. Provide some mass here, so that they don't just get body blocked and cycle charged. Yeah, looking good. So far, Silostra also has managed to not get sniped here by Valkia, which is something. Valkia does deal magical fire damage, so she can cut right through that ethereal physical resistance that Celestra's rocking, so she's got to stay safe using those crabs to block. It's a great deal there. The little spear slop near, trying to damage those depth guard, and uh, yeah, likewise, the flesh hounds also do magical damage, so taking Silostra on foot here, incredibly risky, but another Kraken's pull is going to kind of bail her out a little bit, help to deal some damage to those corn infantry. Their magic resistance will shrug off a bit of the damage, but still, Song of Enthrallment also debuffing the melee attack there, trying to keep herself, again, from getting sniped. Death Guard pole arms supporting quite well, doing some nice damage here, while the dual hand weapons and zombie pole arms also fight in various pockets. This one gets pulled a little bit far out of position, countercharged by some Minotaurs, and they're likely to crumble out there, but we'll see. That hunger honestly can make them a little bit stickier than you might expect. Looks like this crab summon still online. How much time do they have left? Not too much more time. So Silostro's got to figure out some other options to try and block for. Ooh, nice shot there from the Skull Cannon as well as it's regenerated some ammunition. So it looked like, yeah. Used up what it did to regenerate though, so it's going to have to move back in for some more Skulls. Again, slurping up those wet... Uh, like, like I would imagine the <laughs> use them almost like soggy dumplings, like the... The zombies' heads, to be honest, right? Isn't that what it does? It like sucks off people's. Anyway, let's not let's not actually use that specific phrasing because this isn't Slanesh anyway. <laughs> uh yeah. But the balance of power slowly grinding in favor of the Vampire Coast as this fight kind of ensues here. Depth card pull arms, uh, continuing to generate value, and just that hunger also keeping them in the fight has been very important. The light infantry also of the horn player here has kind of come back to haunt them in some ways. I don't know. I'm certainly not an expert in this matchup by any means. And on paper, it seems like if the Vampire Coast player is playing their cards right, they probably should win. I don't know. Maybe not. But Silostra is certainly not winning right now. As she potentially is getting sniped here, manages to just barely escape. Skull Cannon actually, I think, does magical damage in melee as well. Yeah, so if he wants to move in to fight Silostra, that'd actually be decently effective, especially 2v1. Balance power has crawled back towards basically even now as a lot of these Death Guard and zombies are far away from this fight. That said, Korn is having some leadership issues. That Song of Enthrallment once again debuffing melee attack. We'll keep the health bars up as they have this little duel here. You can see Silostra isn't taking too many hits, at least initially, while that effect is up. There she gets a pretty big hit from Valkia and it might be enough to send her into crumbling. Yeah, a couple more hits and she's likely done for. 
With the loss of Silustra, that could spell disaster for Corn if they start running into... Or, sorry, for the Vampire Coast. Could be great success for Corn if they start running into major leadership issues, but... Well, let's see here. Break for the Minotaurs and Marauders is a little bit of a problem, but the Skull Cannon and these Minotaurs are moving to try and take out some of these isolated units. Some great play here. Uh, both actually units will be regenerating, of course. The Gore Feast for the Skull Cannon helped restore some of its HP. Likewise, the Hunger for the Death Guard will also restore some of them, but if you force them into crumbling, that will certainly be advantageous. Minotaurs, though, their leadership is good. It's not great, especially in this late game. They could potentially have some problems, but let's see here. Valkia drops down. She's going to get some good damage on the uh, zombies and, uh, yeah, the Death Guard, too, a little bit. But nice pull away there. Just leave those uh, Death Guard to crumble. Another little rear charge by the Minotaurs is into Halberds, so it's not going to go great. Those cheap Halberds trade very cost-effectively there, but still. I don't know. The Death Guards just have so many unit models alive still. I think the balance of power for Corn is kind of being artificially inflated by Valkia somewhat, but the Skull Cannon actually is a pretty... Big menace to this late game army, especially considering, you know, the halberds are really the key here, taking it down. So if the skull cannon can, let's say, regenerate some ammunition, get some shots on the pole arms, maybe kite it out a little bit in this late game, it certainly could be enough to win. Corn gets a nice collapse too on this isolated pocket of vampire infantry. Vampire pirate infantry even. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna get crumbled away, no problem. So Corn doing a great job kind of keeping their forces all tight. That mobility advantage definitely coming home to roost. But still, again, almost full health unit of Death Guards here. That pole arm is very dangerous. And some more zombies for some extra bodies. So let's continue to fast forward in this late game as Corn tries to bring it back. Yeah, Corn looking uh, pretty solid right now. Another little skull cannon shot. This fight taking place in the woods is at disadvantageous to Corn. They definitely, well, yeah, Corn Minotaurs don't have woodsmen, do they? I don't think so. It doesn't show on their tooltip. I believe the beastmen variants do, which is going to be a little bit painful. They're, the Corn units will be getting debuffed in the forest here, while the Vampire Coast. Infantry will have all the advantage, but that being said, they come in here, they're able to crumble the zombies relatively easily. He's trying his best to cycle charge with these Minotaurs, but the Marauders won't play ball. They're going to shatter here. Another unit of Minotaurs also going to rout. These ones also routing as they're kind of struggling to disengage. The Depth Guards are decently fast, and again, those debuffs from the woods are enough to kind of equalize the speed. They're able to get some hits on the Minotaurs as they pull away, force them into routing. So all of a sudden, that woods engagement maybe just handed Vampire Coast the victory. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Valkia's still fighting here. Still got some HP and leadership to try and get something done. The Skull Cannon also, perhaps. A couple more shots, but really, uh, you know, up close in the woods here. Won't be able to do much. Minotaurs also just absolutely don't even get their charge there. So, yeah, Corn Player definitely needs to pull Vampire Coast out of the woods. But, uh... Don't know if that's going to be possible. Skull Cannon here. Oh yeah, Valkia's taking a lot of damage from those anti-infantry depth guards right now. And the thing is, even the damage the Skull Cannon is doing, like, as long as it's finishing off unit models, that's great. But just doing HP damage isn't going to be massively helpful here. But you see, as Valkia starts to take more and more damage, that balance of power ticking more in the favor of the coast... Yeah, finally the corn player kind of realizes, like, hey, these woods aren't doing me any favors. Almost got this pole arm crumbled out as well, so you might as well do a little bit of kiting. A little bit of charging with Skull Cannon. Nice cheeky charge there. Valkia, it looks like, is struggling to even escape from the Depth Guard. Not really sure. She's not necessarily under any, under any speed debuffs, but must just be tired enough. But, uh, yeah, Skull Cannon finishes the zombies. Gonna pull away there, so let's continue fast-forwarding. Valkia perhaps going in for another charge, but without that one Minotaur, it's, uh... Yeah, it's not gonna be pleasant. And I forget fruit rules specifically about, like, late-game kiting. I think you can if you don't have any ability to catch your opponent. You can just stand and fight, but I'm not sure about specifically standing and fighting in the woods, or rather just standing and getting shot, but... Regardless, Valkia moves in. Skull Cannon's gonna actually get a few more hits. Nice little rear charge here. Ooh. Yeah, it's going to be very, very close there at the end. Valkia just barely routes, and it leads to army losses. Oh, man, most unfortunate. I definitely think, had he been able to pull them out of the woods a little bit earlier, 
perhaps that would have been a win, but a super, super close game between two interesting builds. That uh, initial phase, both of them kind of playing very patiently, I think honestly worked out a little bit better in Korn's favor. They were able to get the in initial early advantage, but survivability of those Death Guards and just the build constructions on both sides meant that Korn was going to have a tough time finishing them off, but Undead Leadership versus Demonic Leadership. Undead's better, of course, as we all know. And the Death Guards managed to just barely pull out the win there. So very interesting, very, very interesting game, I must be, must say. Uh, yeah, on the Vampire Coast side, it's all about the Death Guards. They're by far the biggest carry. Pretty much everything else just gets wrecked. I guess the pole arms are reasonably cost-effective too, the zombie pole arms. One of the most cost-effective pole arm units in the game, to be honest, at their low tier. Although the Kislev recently announced they also were getting a low tier pole arm, which is great for them. Uh, in the Shadows of Change update, which we'll talk more about soon, no doubt. But on the Minotaur, or on Corn side, Minotaurs, as always, just fantastic right now. Skull Cannon also is a surprisingly good pick for me. I don't know. There might be a situation where you want to roll two of these. It is pretty risky because Vampire Coast scales very heavily into long range. They might be able to just blast them. But at that same time, you should still have enough rush tools to close down and shut down the roof ranged heavy build relatively quickly uh, hence all these fast attack units that although they didn't do a great job paying for themselves in this specific battle you still do want them in your build just in case coast goes shooty um, but that said overall very fun battle hopefully you guys enjoyed that one if you do like this sort of content be sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification every time i upload a new video you'll be notified thanks again we'll see you next time